Let's kick some ass. Let's get our fucking shit together and kick some fucking ass! What's up? This is Kicking Ass with Jesse and Andy. Brought to you by American Barbell Club, ABC Strong. Check them out. Uh, they've been taking care of us for a long time. So, yep. yeah, if you guys could. AmericanBarbellClub.com. Yes. Uh, also, Cured, Cured Nutrition. Yep. Uh, CBD, which we've put over a million times on here. CBD has helped me in immense ways. It's unreal. Yeah, it drops. You got it in food, you got it in spices. Uh, check out Cured Nutrition. Iron Coffee takes great care of us, along with, uh, there was one more I was thinking about, too. Well, that's on, good. On it's been good to us, too. Yeah, on it's been great to us. We haven't actually put anything on the Instagram yet, but we will soon. Yes. Uh, we are on the travel rig. We are also... I you mean, might hear Nakamura's theme song <laughs> in the background. <laughs> and the reason why is because we're in Rochester, New York tonight. Yeah. We at a place called Pop Rock. Yeah. Uh, owner, brother... In the house, uh, we got a very special guest, Colin Delaney. Colin, say hello, please. Hello, please. <laughs> thanks yeah. thanks for letting us do this, man. Yeah, you're welcome. You we, like that? You like that bit to open where you tell me to say the thing and I say the thing, but you didn't actually mean to say <laughs> yeah. the thing. It's, yeah. like, it's like you've done this before man, or something. I'm, yeah. I'm quick with it, but yeah, Nakamura's theme's playing. It's fine. There's a playlist that goes on like all day and night here, and it's like the weirdest like Disney songs to. Uh, wrestling songs to and cartoon Tom themes Cochran. to I know, Tom Cochran. I thought it was I thought it was just wrestling songs, but then there's like Life Duck is Tale, a Highway. Uh, DuckTales is in there. Yeah, you got yep. a lot of good shit there. Yeah, and I thought I'd get sick of it. I was like, I'm that, gonna that get sick of this. Next, so, that was my next question. I'm gonna get sick of this so fast. I don't get sick of it ever. Yeah, <laughs> all the songs that I was starting to get sick of, I just removed from the playlist. Oh, good so yeah. we like. Most of the wrestling songs left the playlist. Yeah. Let's be real. We're, Just the ones that I can uh, tolerate on a day-to-day -day basis have yeah. remained. Now You're like, master of your own domain. Yeah, yeah. basically. We're, we're, I mean, we're basically in your house. It's this. You are part owner of Pop Rock. Yep. It's a Rochester, New York. Coffee shop slash cereal bar slash comic book store slash toy store slash. I don't know, all sorts of things. We got white men can't jump on one TV and Sunday night heat on another. There's a lot of distractions. So, like, <laughs> yes. yeah. There's comics, there's cool shit everywhere. Yeah, currently there's a, a club in the back who plays like fighting video games that brings their own setup, and they're set up in the back. On the front table, we have some people who bring their own board games. They're playing board games and eating some cereal. Oh, so you got like regulars. Yeah. Yeah, and we uh, yeah we got Puff and Danny Garcia sitting at the bar uh, enjoying some shakes or some cereal or <laughs> yes, some, some cereal. I don't know, running up a tab on you guys, I guess. How long? How yeah. long? And how, how long has been open for now? Two months. It's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, you, uh, you said it's going good. It's going great. It's, awesome. it's wild. It's like you just take you just like it's it's a life hack. Okay. Yeah. Just take all these things that you enjoy yes. and like open a business with it and hope to God that other people like them too. Yeah. 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 It's, I, yeah, it's like super <laughs> like niche, but at the yeah. same time, it's like, but super not because it's just everything that people love. Like, yes. I don't know. I like all these things. I'm sure there's other people that do too. But uh, there's also probably like cross pollination as well. Yeah. Oh, for so sure. It's like, yeah. you know, game, like board game dudes. Probably love video games. Right. And like video game dudes probably like wrestling. Right. Everybody loves Boy Men Can't Jump. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And you need cereal. Right. You need some, some something to eat. And yeah. cereal's super underrated. Very it's, underrated. It's amazing. So cereal, someone told me the other day it's like a $13 billion business in cereal. But everybody who walks through the door here is usually like, I haven't had cereal in like a decade. Yeah. I get that more than I get, man, I love cereal. Really? Yeah. yeah. More people are like, man, I never eat cereal anymore. Yeah? Yeah. That is surprising. I mean, I guess because it's when you're a kid, cereal is like the jam. Well, I think cereal is kind of, uh, at least, it used to be a convenience thing, right? Like, it was better than... Uh, because breakfast used to be making eggs and bacon and sausage yeah. and toast and all this stuff, and it was a process. So then cereal came in, and cereal was easier. Well, yeah. nowadays, we have so many things easier than cereal, even. Like, yeah. pouring a bowl of cereal and some milk yeah. into a bowl and eating it is like, like you have to sit down and do it. Yeah. People you aren't even get getting a, into that anymore. You can get a corn dog that is pancake <laughs> with breakfast sausage. Yeah. <laughs> you put it in the microwave while you get ready, and yeah. then it's ready, and you can drive while eating it. Yeah. So a bowl of cereal, <laughs> you can't really drive while eating, so people are super not into it anymore, I but guess. I but feel, I but feel, people still yeah. love it. Yeah. It's just not convenient enough for them to do it on their own. But I feel like cereal is that thing, like, when you're a kid, it's, like, the first thing you learn how to, like, make on yeah. your own. Like, right. you don't just... 
grab it and eat it like oh I have to grab a bowl and a spoon and the cereal and the milk and like as a kid you like feel like you're a cop like you made a meal <laughs> you, you know did what it mean? you did it yeah, that, exactly. then toast toast is next yeah to macaroni well, I feel like macaroni and cheese is then like the first like go to of actual yeah, cooking pretty short pretty shortly thereafter that yeah. or, or grilled cheese yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but so now cereal like it is kind of a an event so we've just made it big we just put toppings on it we get yeah. different kinds of milks so yeah. we we have fun with it and people have fun eating it I guess you have like a secret menu stuff you have like yeah there's like I like the fact that you can come in here and get like again another like niche thing where yeah. like a cereal thing where it's like hey I'm on the inside I know they have this yeah we, we can, and we come up with new ones all the time yeah. so sometimes like just the customers who are in there while we come up with these stupid ideas will know about it and they'll come back and be like can I get the yeah like ah, last night we came yeah, up with I know with it's not the, on the menu but last night we came up with a combination of uh Tricks and Oreo O's, and it's called Bitches Ain't Shit Butt. <laughs> I love that. Tricks and O's. Yeah. Come on. Put it, great. put it up there. <laughs> tell, them about, tell them what the Every Time I Die is, or the Andy Williams. Well, the Andy, like, what, it's the Every Time I Die. It's uh, the, the blueberry pancake crunch and the donut cereal yeah, together. Yeah, the, the pink donut. Yeah, and, and, and so uh, Andy had that the first time he was in here on our, on our inaugural opening day. Yeah. And... So we just called it that, and every time someone orders it now, or orders anything like it, or asks for a suggestion of combination, I tell them it's that, and I tell them it's the every time I die. Yeah. So literally, just this afternoon, we had someone come in, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have the every time I die. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Today what, I, I had yeah, a Yeah, what'd you get today? It was good. I got the Oreos, the Oreo O's, yep. with uh, powdered peanut butter on top of it. Yep. And it was fantastic. It looked real nice. With some non-dairy milk. With some almond milk. Post, if you're listening to this, which you're probably not, <laughs> you should come out with a peanut butter Oreo <laughs> O's. Because it's really delicious. Man, so uh, I was looking at the cereals the other day. And, you know, like General Mills makes a bunch of cereals. Post makes a bunch of cereals. Who makes Captain Crunch? Is it... Uh, Kellogg's? No. I was going to say Kellogg's. It's made by Quaker Oats. Really? And once you realize that, then you realize that the captain is just a cartooned version of the uh, fucking Quaker, Quaker Oats guy. guy. <laughs> yeah, he's not even a captain. No. That is but very never listen. I'm looking at him right now, yeah. But he's just the Quaker Oats guy, but in cartoon, cartoon form. Version. Yeah. That is crazy. Well, sucks. Yeah. I was and looking all around the box and I was like, uh, well, it's not Post, it's not General Mills, it's not Kellogg's. What is it? So I had to like scour the box. I was like, oh, it's made by Quaker. Holy shit. That's He's the just same a fucking. Dude. That's the same guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like when you watch Pirate. It's like when you watch Jumanji, and then you get older and you realize that the dad of Robin Williams is also the hunter. Oh, yeah. And oh. you're like, that's the same fucking guy. <laughs> yeah. It's just like Captain Crunch yeah. and uh, the Quaker Oats guy. <laughs> that's a son of a bitch. You guys do, uh, you guys have the energy drinks too. Yeah. You do all kinds of cocktails? We make mocktails, so they're like uh, cocktails, but without the alcohol, with energy drinks instead. Yeah. And those are pretty fun, too. I have one called the Monday Nitro, because it's I got Surge in it. Yeah. And Surge yeah. was a big sponsor of Nitro yeah, was, in the 90s. That was a big one. <laughs> do, you cross, do you cross energy drinks? Like, do you have drinks where it's like a Monster and a, and Red, a Red Bull? We don't yet, but we're, we're talking about uh, some kind of super... That's a big move. Super... Super uh, Monster. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Thing. And we, uh, we also just like to name shit here so yeah. like cereal combos get names the mocktails get names yeah. because yeah. it's more fun that way it's way more it's fun that fun. way and, then what and are the- a lot of people are just going to order it for the name like they don't even care what's in it they're yeah. like oh you have something called the aquaman i'm gonna get it yeah, yeah. <laughs> done it just yeah. so happens i love aquaman <laughs> yeah. yeah which i do <laughs> do um uh what are the coffee brands you guys carry i know it's death wish we, so we carry death wish yeah the one and i got the- right now is good too fifth it's from Fifth Frame, yeah, which is a local is roaster. Rochester, good. Yep, it's a local roaster Very one. Good. And all our all our uh, coffees are local. Death yeah. Wish is the only one that's not, but they're still, still New York State. Still semi, yeah. yeah, they're, they're upstate. Um, and they've been in touch with us. They're actually going to come down and podcast live from Pop Rock nice. Hell yeah. next month. That's great. Um, but the other ones are from Canal Town, which is like right up the road, like literally right up East Ave. Yeah. And they make all kinds of fun flavors. And they were also cool with us just renaming the flavors into whatever yeah. we wanted. Oh, that's cool. Like the the chocolate cherry, we call the Tom and Cherry, and the, <laughs> the Snickerdoodle cookies, the Wookie, because I feel like Chewbacca would taste kind of cinnamon and sugary, you know? Yeah. If you were to bite a Wookie. Yeah. If I were to bite I'm a gonna, Wookie. I'm going to say dirt and, uh, I don't know, smelly <laughs> stuff. <laughs> okay, well, to each their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did, like, uh, 
nerd question, but like, how do the comics work? Because like, now you, are you guys getting like shipments? Yeah, we have the new comic. We get new comics every week. So, like, traditional comic book stores are just like, you know, you go in to get your comics every week, and then they just have long boxes of back issues of comics. The old stuff? With, of old stuff. And they'll just hold on to comics for literally ever, hoping that somebody will buy them. And yeah. there's just boxes and boxes and boxes. Like, that's pretty much what the place is. So we decided we didn't want to do that. We're going to have a shelf of new comics, all the newest books, and then after, like, a month or two... Uh, we're just going to shuff, uh, shuffle them off the shelf and we're donating all the books to the children's hospital. Oh, oh that's, that's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Very so cool. uh, we got that coming up where we're going to donate all our old books over to them. And that'll be cool. They're very excited about it. We're very excited about it. We thought that was important to do something like that. Because, like, what are we going to do? Hang on to them forever and just hope that somebody comes in and buys yeah. this comic? Yeah, it's going to buy the collection or Six months down the line or something. eight months down the line. I'm if you need like, that, there's ten other comic book stores yeah. for that. I was going to say, what, that, like, that's... Then you have to buy like places to put those, and then you're like, this place is gonna look cluttered, right? Because there's gonna be like a table in the middle of just like old comics. <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah, eventually we wouldn't have room for all that yeah. stuff, and it's just once again, there's other places for that. We of wanted course. to be cleaner, non-cluttered, not like anytime you go to a comic book store, and this isn't shitting out other comic book stores. It's kind of shitting out other comic book stores, but like, I know where you're going with they this. all feel yeah. cluttered. It yeah. always feels very like yeah, stuff well, just like we walked everywhere. in today. You guys, you said you guys, you made those like little paper guys, which are super cool, but like you're like we have nowhere to put them. Yeah, like and after it, a while, it's just gonna start looking cluttered. Right, and same with toy like toy and collectible stores. They just look like it's like assaulting, visually assaulting. Yes. There's just things everywhere they, they you don't like know they, it's like a hoarder it kind of looks like a hoarder's place yeah so. kind of so we didn't want that we wanted it to feel clean in here and look you know yeah. be inviting because we want this to be it like a place modern. that people feel like they want to hang well, out they want to hang out yeah. yeah you know like that's there's nothing that's like worse than like when you go into a comic book store and there's like five old dudes that have probably hung out in there for 30 years yeah and the owner is probably like, well, George, Gary, Dan, Larry, and Phil were there for eight hours today and bought zero yes. things. Right. Right? Right. Well, right. like, at least here, if someone comes in, they can uh, buy some coffee. They, you, know, you can get they a can coffee. Get coffee. You can get a cereal. You yeah. can get a drink. You can get a... We have donuts. Plus, from, this uh, isn't a fucking library. Right. But on the other hand, we do, we don't, we're not going to like yell at you if you start flipping through a book, man. Of course. Or if you want to read it, like, I don't know. We have a membership program where people can, uh, it's $20 a month and they can read some of the books that we pull aside every week. Uh, usually 20 books a week we put aside brand new books That's off the shelf. Smart, yeah. And then you also get 20% off everything you buy. Awesome. So, but we let people, you know. We want people to sit in here and read comics. Like, that's yeah. part of the experience, I think. Yeah. And that's my favorite thing. When someone comes in for the first time and they're like, all right, I want a coffee, I want a cereal, I want a comic book. That's yeah. awesome. Because they want to do it. You're doing the combo. Yeah, they want yeah. everything. Do yeah. it how it's supposed to be, I guess. That's really cool. So, yeah. I had a guy come in last night. He's like, I've never read a comic book in my life. What do you recommend? <laughs> oh, and I went over and I got a great him question. one. Yeah, I, I picked him out one. He read it. He bought it, read it, and then just left it on the counter. <laughs> and he just left. And I was like, yeah. oh. But he read it while he was here and like yeah, had yeah. his coffee and had his cereal. And, Super cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And then the video games are in the back. Yeah, we have a Nintendo Switch and uh, like a Nintendo uh, NES Classic with like all the games on it. Yeah. Um, on a TV in the back. Uh, we're getting some arcade games. Oh, for real? Yeah, in the nice. next couple weeks. So we'll have some of that going some old school on. Stuff. Yeah, we don't know exactly what yet, but yeah. probably some Marvel Capcom, maybe some Neo Geo. Yeah, very good. Neo Geo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good call. And like, I don't know. I think a lot of the things that like people get excited about are super weird to us, but then when we thought about it, we're like, that's not that weird. That's kind of why we did it. Like our bathrooms, like we did our, we, it was super important to us to like, gimmick up the bathroom. Make them fun. Yeah. And yeah. to a point where we're like, this is silly. Why are we wasting all this time on this? And then now like people come in every it's day and are like, holy shit, your bathroom's a TARDIS. And it's like, yep, sure is. Yeah. And yeah. people will take pictures with it and like, it's awesome. It goes a long way. Yeah. Like we have Star Wars napkins. People are like, 
I love you have Star Wars napkins. It's like, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. might as well go for That's it if we're idea. going for it. <laughs> yeah. That's important, though, man. Those, like, tiny details, I feel like, are just... Yeah, they it's put it... It's what makes someone a regular. Right, they put it over the edge for people. Yeah. Like, it's an experience, you know? Like, we're yeah. not just trying to sell people stuff. We want people to have, like, this experience of being here and an experience that they enjoy and they'll come back they and they'll... want to come back and, you know, bring, yeah. and bring their friends and check right. this place out. Especially, like, it's such a prime spot. You guys are right in, like, downtown Rochester. Yeah, we're, awesome. like, in the heart of it. We're at 337 East Ave if you're a Rochester listener. And it's, like, right... Or at, driving through. Or driving through, right at the corner of East and Alexander, basically, which is, like, right downtown, like, right in the thick of it. So... Yeah, it's perfect. Prime location. Um, I do want to. I do want to talk some wrestling stuff with you too. Well, oh I'm, yeah, I'm gonna ask that question. I'm a wrestler. Okay. <laughs> Before you do, yeah. How long have you guys actually known each other? Like when? When was like the first time you guys remember, like being in the same locker room with each other? Man, it was and, like acknowledging each other. Two thousand like seven or six. Yeah, it was probably like that. probably just before I went to WWE. Um, I feel like I knew you for. At, at least a year or two before that, I like. I mean, from my story is like, I started wrestling in Buffalo around those years, like 2006, 2007. Yeah. And the first ones where there was NWA Empire in Buffalo, yep. and then NWA Upstate in Rochester. And you yep. did both, didn't you? Yep, 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 yeah. yep. So I just I knew there was like you, Brody or Luke Harper and Jimmy Olsen were like the three I right. remember. Right, we were like the us and Cloudy and Cheech were we were the upstate five at the time that yep. we were like the crew. Yeah, because yeah. we were the five that traveled. We were the five doing it. We were working like those upper indies. You know, we weren't just piddling around in New York. We yeah. were working like CZW and Shakara and Mid IWA Mid South and you know trying to always do better and, and do things and we were the only ones doing that in yeah, like in the um, area three hour radius like yes, there was nobody sure. else trying yeah. um, that, did you work uh, Neo in Niagara Falls at all no okay. I never did Neo I did UWA Hardcore which was like the thing I, yes I never, that time. was like UWA Hardcore to, for everybody was like PWG before PWG, like yeah, in Toronto. Of, of Canada, yeah, like Smash is kind of like what UWA Hardcore was. It's like a, kind of the, the close equivalent now with like bringing indie. in all the, yeah, it was like, but it was like the Super Indie back in the day. They were bringing the guys from Japan, right? Yeah, like Okada was doing young boy matches at UWA Hardcore. I didn't know that. Yeah. You That's didn't know nuts. that? No. Dude. Yeah, Okada, weighing all of like 170 pounds, <laughs> yeah. was do in just black trunks, doing young boy matches, coming in with Ultimo Dragon. Yeah, I remember they That's brought insane. in Dragon. Who, who else did they bring? They brought Ultimo Dragon, and they brought in like another big Japanese name too, didn't they? Oh, uh, dude, I was don't remember. Oh, they didn't have Liger. They okay. brought an Ultimo Bunch. Yeah. I remember that. And the, but then, I remember like, it was him and somebody else versus the machi uh, Motor City Machine Guns was like a big one. Yeah, because uh, I was just going to say, in addition to like bringing like Ultimo Dragon, who happened to have... Uh, fucking Okada yeah. with him. Yeah. They also had Motor City Machine Guns, uh, M Dog and Josh, yeah. Sanjay, uh, Larry Sweeney, Eddie Kingston. Like it was this like who's who on this show in Mississauga. Yeah, yeah. In this church that had this super dope setup and just these super cool dream matches all the time and just a rowdy crowd and like. I feel like it was just it was before its time because it's like yeah. you know now with the internet blowing up so much as weird as that sounds like this was before all that you know what yeah. I mean like a super indie show with big names like rowdy crowds like smart mark type crowds like right like we we had to type the address into MapQuest there you go and print out the directions to go yeah. because we didn't have GPSs back there like yeah. I think Brody eventually got a GPS but. We were running off paper directions. You yeah. didn't just have cell phones that had GPS, and you know only rich people had like mounted GPS. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I remember that. I remember like looking at GPS, and like, man, guys, one day <laughs> we're talking about the band. It's going like, to change our lives. One day, guys, we're going to get us so much money. We're going to have a GPS. Yeah, when no. I when I got signed to WWE, I bought a GPS, like one for 
the window and a portable DVD player. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a portable DVD player was like, you were highbrow. Like, yeah. You bust that thing out like, what's up? I got three discs here. I'm going to watch all of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right in front of you guys. You're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I got stuff to do. <laughs> I got a 12-inch screen here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mine had a remote. Yeah. You guys. So, you know, you could be about eight feet away. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you needed to, you I could be like to 12 to eight feet away. 12 you to still eight. know what, you what's be, happening. You could be in the plane seat next to me. <laughs> yeah. Still yeah. Re- yeah. Control this thing. Cross the aisle. But then, I mean, so we, I mean, we knew each other for, I, I would say, at least a year or two. And then, I mean, I was there when you got hired, too. Yeah, 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 which yeah. Which was yeah. awesome. Super awesome. Like, that just was crazy. Be, like, Long story short, like for me to be there in WWE as an extra, it was in Rochester, correct? Yep. And then yep. just knowing they need, they asked for somebody quote unquote smaller. Yep. And then Brody <laughs> called you, and to see you show up with like jeans and construction boots on and yep. like a Red Wings hockey jersey. Yep. Yep. <laughs> walked like, in, long, walked long in for, walked in for extra work yeah. in like the most non-professional looking, <laughs> like ripped jeans, yeah. uh, fucking. Yeah. Steel toe boots and a Red Wings jersey, ready to rock. <laughs> Just w- with uh, 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 like a plastic bag with knee pads and some shooter boots in it. Yeah, because you were literally you were at, that's it. You were at work and didn't uh-huh. like your girlfriend at the time give you your gear or something? Yeah, she. W- I, I I was at work and I was like, well, I have to just drive straight there because yeah. Brody called me and said there was a spot potentially open if I can get down there, and I worked right around the corner, so yeah. I just drove straight there. I wasn't gonna go like, oh, I gotta go home and get my gear. Fuck that. I'm gonna take yeah. a shower, clean up. No, I'm gonna yeah. go straight there. I ran out the door at my job. I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> just got in my car and started driving. Yeah, what, what did I care? <laughs> they might understand. Yeah. But at the time, like you know, I'm 21 years old. I don't give a shit about this factory exactly. job. Like, exactly. yeah. if they fire me, but I got to wrestle on TV, bah, yeah, I'll find course. another factory yeah. job. Yeah, right, right. So. Yeah, just drove straight there. I called my girlfriend at the time and was like, you gotta go home, you gotta get my wrestling gear. So she just brought it. I got to the back door and Jamie Noble was like, are you my guy? And I was like, yep, that's me. He's like, all right, get in here. You swear to God you can work? And I was like, yes, sir, yes, sir. He's like, all right, because it's my name. It's my name going on you right now. I'm telling people that you can work, so you better swear to God to me that you can work. And I was like, yes, sir, I can work. Yeah. Yeah. He's taking me around to all the writers. This is my guy. This is my guy. And then in between rooms we're going in, he's like, you better not be lying to me, kid. You better swear to God. You swear to God you can work? And I was like, yep. Like, no idea what I could do. Were you a James Gibson fan? Oh, yeah. Okay. For sure. Okay. So oh that's got to be like right away. Yeah. You're just like freaking out. Insane. Okay. Yeah, like, because uh, as a smaller guy, I always like, like, Dean Malenko was my dude growing up. Yeah. Because he was little, but he didn't wear a mask. I don't know why I didn't really attach to the mask guys. I yeah. just didn't feel like that was me. But Dean Malenko was just a s- small white guy. Yeah. Yeah. Who was just being awesome. Yep. And really good at wrestling. Yeah. And then Jamie Noble was like the next kind dude. of guy in the, the lineage exactly. of that. He's kind of. in my top three, so. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, Jamie Noble. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, he was running me through the halls, and then we got to the ring, and I got to I got to work out a little bit. Uh, oh, you did? Okay. I thought you went straight to the ring with Vince and Shawn Benjamin. <laughs> no, I okay. got in, and I remember I rolled around with uh, Corey Graves. Yeah, because Corey was with us too. And he, so I got in, and he just happened to be in at the time. So I got in there with him, and he was super awesome because he was like. I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I know how to wrestle, but I don't know what they're looking for yeah, yeah. or what they wanted. And he was like... Just led just, you through it. Yeah, just kind of was talking to me yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Like, definitely looking out for me. Like, sell so more, cool. sell more. You know, they want you to sell. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So he was like... Super cool talking me yes. through it. And so I could, uh, I felt like after a little bit of wrestling around, people were like, okay. He'll do, you yeah. know. They weren't nervous anymore. And then I got, and then sh- they brought Shelton to the oh, ring. Okay. Okay. And we're like, oh, here's the kid you're wrestling. Yeah, so I, I do remember, like, walking around, just, like, peeking out at the ring and just seeing you in the ring with Shelton Benjamin and Vince McMahon. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> you just <laughs> you gotta put him right in there. <laughs> and I, I don't know this for a fact, but I feel like, so they needed a smaller guy to get beat up by Shelton. But I don't think it was until they saw how small I really was that... When they like when Jamie Noel brought me to the writers' room, I feel like they saw how little I was, yeah. and then they were like, 
oh, we oh, got to wow. run with this. And yeah. they, I think that's where the talking segment all came from. Yeah. I don't think it was planned that they were just going to have a small guy have a talking segment, then get beat by Shelton. We'll probably play you were so like baby face too. Yeah, and they like, probably saw me and were like, oh shit. Yeah. We got to we yeah. can roll with this. You were promo where you're real nervous. Like, yeah. 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 Like, here's a child. <laughs> right. Here's, yeah, yeah. here's an actual child. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. do this. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And it was just the wildest thing of all time. I, I and I just remember doing it and then like, you know, everyone went crazy about it. Like Vince McMahon jumped up and shook my hand. Everyone's shaking my hand. Tell yeah. me what a great job I did. I get yeah. to the end of the tunnel. Johnny Ace is telling me they want me back next week and they're going to give me like a thousand dollar bonus. I never made a thousand dollars doing anything in my exactly. life at that point. Are yeah. you kidding me? I was going nuts. And they're giving me flight information for next week and yada, yada, yada. That's awesome. And I remember I walk into this small closet where the extras were changing and it's all the guys. It's Jesse and Luke Harper and Corey Graves and uh, it was, uh, did McChesney make it in there? I think he. Sh- I think he showed up. McChesney, really Michael yeah. Tarver. Oh yeah. Was in yeah, there. yeah. I'm trying to remember who else was uh, there. Yeah. I'm trying to think of two. But yeah. So I walk in and uh, all you guys were like, "Oh, that was so cool. That was so cool." And I just sit down and I go. I think I just got a job. And the room explodes. <laughs> I remember the fucking Brody just grabs me and like picks yeah, me up. He's yeah, like, yeah. no way! No way! So and awesome. I'm just like stone faced, like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. The fuck? I was working like two hours ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was packing boxes. Like, what like, goes on? Legit, yeah. I think me and I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure me and Brody went off to the side and watched you like not for, not on the monitor. We watched you like through a like a little side so we could see yeah, the yeah. Rangel live and stuff. It was it was. It's, I'm just glad. I'm glad I was there for it. Yeah, it I was. was really I was cool. in. I was in your boots. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, you wore his boots. Yeah. So I. So. And uh, I just ended up selling them to you, didn't I? <laughs> or giving no, them to you or no, something? No, no, I bought, oh, I, no, you I bought, the bought same, my own. You bought the same so pair. So I, uh, I got there, and at the time I wore kick pads, but, you know, I was really nervous because I heard that they didn't like kick pads. So I was, like, kind of freaking out. And so uh, Jesse was like, hey, these might fit, mine might fit you. So I tried them on, and I was like, you mind if I borrow them? Sure He's like, yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> it was the first time I'd ever worn wrestling boots in my life, and they were Jesse's. So, and then I wrestled right. in them, and then they need me back next week. So I had to drive to Buffalo to re-borrow Jesse's boots <laughs> to fly How out to insane. North Carolina. I totally yeah. forgot about that. But I remember I got like I immediately got on high spots and like sent them a message and was like, hey, here's the deal. I need white boots like immediately. Yeah. And they were they or were WWE television. Right. And yeah. they sent they sent it to me in like a week. Oh, that's that's awesome. awesome. But yeah. I had to, so I wore Jesse's boots on the first one and the second one, but I had to like drive to Jesse's house on a Sunday night <laughs> I gotta remember to this get time. him. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. That's so Fly cool. out, wrestle, and then drive back and drop his boots back off to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, man, things are going pretty well, huh? Yeah, keep traveling, man. Good stuff. <laughs> I might have to come back and borrow your boots next Sunday. Yeah, they asked me again, because, well, like, yeah, I mean, that was, I don't know, to me, that was part of the interesting story, too, was like, they just... Week after week, they just kept bringing you back, and it was a while until they were like, all right, we're going to give you a contract now. Yeah, it was just up in the air, I, but I was just, like, happily living it. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, you're just going to fly me here, and every week pay me a bunch of money, and I get beat up, and then I go home? Sounds fine to me. Yeah. Like, I think I it was, have been... I think it was uh, like, like, insider stuff. I think it was Jimmy Yang was the one that told me. Uh, the big thing, like, a big thing for you was that, because a lot, a lot of the de- developmental guys, when they would get brought up, um, they would pay the company would pay for their like rental car and room and blah blah blah. Yeah, and they did that for you. But you actually were went around everybody was like, hey, I have like a rental car and a room if anybody wants to like crash because those guys had to pay for all their own stuff. Yeah, so they were I, all like, oh yeah. I just, I mean, that just seemed like common. Yeah, whatever exactly. to me. Like, but Jimmy Yang said he was like blown away you did that. Like that's why all those guys liked you so much. Yeah, Jimmy. I mean, Jimmy became my travel dude because yeah, yeah I had all that stuff. So yeah. yeah. I, I Hey, if you want a room or you want to... I, I, I have a car. Ride with me or, <laughs> yeah, I mean... Yeah, yeah. Uh, like you what? said, it sounds like common knowledge, but... Yeah, I remember uh, I, Mike Knox wasn't on TV when I first got there. Yeah. But I ran into him in an airport on a layover. Uh, he was just getting brought back to TV. And... Uh, I see him from across the room and I know who he is but I'm like I'm not going to walk up to him in an airport he probably don't know who I am I've been on TV for like three weeks or whatever and he walks over to me he's like hey you're the kid who's on ECW right I say yes sir 
He goes, oh man, everyone down in developmental fucking hates your guts. <laughs> and I was like, uh, straight, straight to television, brother. <laughs> he's like, you skip developmental. Everyone fucking hates you down there. <laughs> oh man. And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, just this 21 year old kid, like super happy, like little yeah. you know, like, yeah, it's so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was like, I did, I want to like fast forward too, because like, yeah, that's like, WWE stuff I've I've talked about to death. Yes, so yeah, exactly. fuck that shit. Let's yeah. <laughs> Let's I'm a new man, guys. The sliding German that you invented. Yeah, yeah these sons really of bitches. Idea. I see a lot of people doing it. Oh, man, I think it was I think Trent actually put on Twitter that Trent, you invented it, and he like it was from like a gift from like Japan. <laughs> like, Trent gave me really good credit because it hit the net pretty quick after he did it. Yeah, and then everyone started blowing him up like, "Hey, man, that's what what a cool move, Trent." Blah, 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 blah. And then I texted Trent and go, man, are you stealing my fucking move? Yeah. <laughs> and I have this long, funny text back from Trent, because if you don't know Trent, he like... Yeah, he's an oddball. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite people. Yeah. But he texted me back like this long, like, yes. Yes, I did. I'm sorry I betrayed you, Colin. Like, and then each one were individual messages, because yeah. of course they are. Yeah. Uh, and he uh, then put a thing up on Twitter, like, Colin Delaney invented it. I stole it from him. Morrison stole it from him. This other guy who told us about it also stole it from him. Yeah. We all stole it from Colin. Yeah. We all betrayed him. That's what I saw, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then from that, like, uh, Mick Foley sent me a direct message on Twitter and was like, hey, it's so cool you came up with that move. It's a really cool move. You know, That's keep awesome. rocking. And, like, Zack Ryder started following me on That's Twitter, awesome. which he already should have been, because, like, it's not like I don't know him <laughs> exactly. or anything or exactly. never met him. Yeah. But he... Uh, he started following me, and now still, like the other day, a uh, gif of somebody else doing it went up, yeah, and somebody that. credited Trent, and then Trent credited me. Yeah. Good, good, good. So, I mean, it's kind of cool. I don't know. Like, part of me's like, man, why can't I just come up with something that people don't see? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. I come up with one fucking move in my entire life, and everyone <laughs> has to steal it. Yeah. Like, ugh. Yeah, very true. But on the other half, it's like, I don't know. I came up with something cool, and people like it, and people are. That's awesome. You put your stamp the, on pro wrestling. Yeah, you're the sli- you're the sliding. Right. German I told guy. I told Trent that all I wanted out of it was that once he started like doing it in Japan, they had to yell Colin Delaney with the enthusiasm that they yell lariat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Colin Delaney. Every time <laughs> he hits amazing. it. Amazing. Yeah. Yes. Right. And he said, <laughs> "I can make that happen." He's a liar. He's a liar, by the way. Uh, He's just telling me what I want to hear. Wait, does right. he live in Rochester now? Yeah. Oh, How yeah. How weird is that? You want me to get him down here? Yeah. At some point, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right now? Because he's hurt, right? <laughs> yeah, he's hurt. He's not doing nothing. It's he's, like elbows hurt, right? He's fucking petting his dog right now and taking... His dog is awesome. And making weird pictures of making him. Making weird pictures of him. Yeah, posted pictures of his feet. <laughs> <laughs> and doing some weird thing where he puts almonds on stuff or something. What I don't know. I used to get... Uh, Did he get hurt at PWG? Yes. Okay. Uh, wrestling like Justin. Right? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I saw him at Wrestle Circus the next night, and he was just all messed up. And he's like, "Yeah, I think I tore my bicep uh, and my pec, so I'm like pretty broken forever." <laughs> um, I always forget that he lives in Rochester. Now. Yeah, he lives like two minutes from here. That's, That's so weird. Uh, he's lived in Rochester for a while now. I've seen him in Rochester probably three times. Yeah. 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 Brother, yeah. brother travels. I get it. No, 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 don't put it on that. Yeah. Don't put it on that, because uh, brother travels, and then brother's at home for weeks doing yeah. literally nothing. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. So, <laughs> hang. he rents cars every week. He doesn't own a car. He just rents oh. them when he gets back, and then drops them back off. What? Like, yeah, I, I keep telling him, like, man, go get a car. Like, yeah. it's so much yeah. cheaper. Yeah. I Maybe he has by now, I've, yeah, but I don't know. That's what I, I've never heard of anybody doing that in my life besides him. We got we were getting back from Wrestle Circus, car every week. and he's just like typing in his thing, like, "Oh, I just spent way too much money on a rental car for this week." And it's like. <laughs> Why would you do that? Or he could have went car shopping when yeah, he got home. Maybe, maybe you just get an Uber home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tomorrow. Car shop. Yeah, tomorrow. Go yeah. car shopping. Something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> Fucking. But, like I, I, like, I don't know. I just want to get the point across that, you know. That you, move you, is you've mine. Been, you've been kicking ass for a long time. Yeah. You still are. I'm trying. Yeah, you like, I mean, you haven't slowed down at all, which is, to me, is always, like, 
me and him talk about this stuff all the time. Like to me, it's it's like it's motivational. Like to, you know, yeah. for you to still be going as hard as you do. Well, it's you're a hundred. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> no. So, but you, know, you it, it you're doing the going at you're doing the same thing. Yeah. Like in the last, and uh, I don't credit impact because it was even before impact but you started doing some of the like the best stuff i ever saw you do you were always so crisp and so clean but like you upped it another level and it was like oh shit he's always been good and now he's like this kind of good we're all fucked well i think it was like that what we were just talking about earlier was like i mean i realized i mean i saw tyson dukes do this too like i realized tyson's another one man yeah like i had to evolve like you said like when scrambles and three ways and all these things became like a norm on the indies, instead of being like the bitter veteran guy and being this is stupid and blah blah blah, it's like no, learn how to do it. Right. You know what I mean? Learn and how to do it and, and learn how to do it, it well. Yeah, because it's you know what I mean. It's 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 gonna like the more I kept getting thrown at them, it's like okay, this is the thing now. Like you gotta learn how to do this stuff. You know sure, what I mean? and and you should be able to as a pro wrestler be good at every part of this a little exactly. bit. Like I hate people who are like. Oh, why would I watch this guy? I don't do anything like them. Well, that's why you're never going to get any better. Yeah. Like, or, uh, and what if I, you what if you work that guy or you know, someone like him? You know who I hate to watch? Guys who work just like me. Yeah. I hate to work watch like I I don't get a whole lot out of watching guys my size or guys who wrestle similar to my style. I love wrestling like watching big guys. Yeah. Like if I'm going to tape study, I want to watch two big guys fucking clang heads and see what I can get out of that. Yeah. yeah. I don't really high fly that much, but I love watching flyers. I love like I I want to watch all of it and see what I can get out of it to help me better myself yeah. whether it's for when I wrestle a big guy or wrestle a technical guy or wrestle a flyer exactly. or something that I can pull into my own that they use with their size but maybe I can use at my size and still make it fun and make it work Yeah. like for a while I, I thought uh, like a part of my game that I wasn't totally comfortable with was like main events uh huh like once you get past that eight to ten, ten to twelve, yeah. like that's More a whole that, different like, fifteen yeah. stretch. That even if it is a ten to twelve, a main event ten to twelve is different than a yeah. regular mid card ten to yeah. twelve. Yeah. So I just watched main event matches. I just watched. I just put on events, and I always watch the main event and just watch them ad nauseum and just took notes yeah. on what made that match different, what made that match you know stand out, what made it special. And now I feel like I have a better handle on it, a better grip on it. Yeah. yeah. So we. We should all have like as pro wrestlers we should have the ability to do all of it oh yeah 100 percent. Like, like if you don't think you're good at something don't just be like oh i'm not good at that try and get fucking good at it you dummy yeah, or get the yeah. shitty attitude of like that's stupid i don't want to you know, blah, 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 blah. It's like, right. no man you should be like you said you should be able to do everything you, you should sh- you should be able to work as a good guy you should be able to work as a bad guy you should be able to do all these things right you should be able to work a scramble if you get put in one you yeah. shouldn't be the odd man out of the scramble because that's not your style yeah you should be you should be able to use that odd man out to your advantage yeah. and put on the best fucking scramble you yes. can. Yes, exactly. You know? You like, like you are definitely one of those guys where it's like, for me at least, I know it's like if I hear about somebody and they had a bad match with you, it's like, oof, that's not a good <laughs> thing. Yeah, like, yeah, you have a bad match with Colin? Like, well, that's not easy to pull. Like, it's, you know, you just... It's you, almost you, more impressive. I'm yeah, impressed yeah, yeah. by them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not even mad. <laughs> yeah. That's a... Pre- I don't know how you... I don't know how you did you that. You must have tried really hard because that's hard to do, man. Yeah, that's, I mean... All the years I've seen you, you know what I mean? Like, you always... Thanks, you man. You always perform. Exactly. I try. I mean, and, like, that's that's part of the fun of it. Like, I don't think I'll ever be that... I, once I get to be that guy who's just, like, going out there and doing the match, I think I'll just stop that's before that, man. That's what I myself, yeah. too. It's like, when I'm that guy, that's when I'm done. You when I'm mean? just, like... I have my spots and I have my things I do and I kind of just get through it. Yeah. If I'm not like evolving and trying to better and trying to like yeah. be better, I don't think I'm going to do it anymore. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chuck yeah. Taylor said years ago, I heard him say that like if your next year isn't as isn't better than your last year yeah. in pro wrestling, like it might be time to, to yeah. reconsider. You yeah. should always be striving for better. You should never be striving for the same. Exactly. You should always be trying to do that one new thing or that one better thing or that one thing to better yourself yeah. Yeah. every year. Yeah. And if Spe- you're not, eh. especially especially if you rewind and like, wow, the past five years I've been working the same shows, the same promotions, like right. you know, all within a forty mile radius of my house. Like right. 
right. you know what I mean? That that I don't understand. I, I never no, will. No, I'm from the time I was 16 years old, I was out there. Yeah. I was I was hopping in the car with the Ring Crew Express, driving five six hours, giving VHS tapes to motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> at 16 years old, yeah. driving five or six hours in a car to hand a VHS tape <laughs> to promoters. It's so hard, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, I still. I, I, we didn't bring VHS tapes back. That's the real point. Yeah. Fuck this. Because if someone watches it, that means they really care. Yeah, I I'm not emailing you my YouTube links. I Fuck still, that. I still have like a lot of like a VHS tape with like the sticker on the front, and it says like my name, my email, like handwritten, yeah. like my phone number. For sure. Like, yeah, like, For sure. This is my tape, man. Uh, I'm Check it out. I remember when Jeff Jarrett was at uh, Upstate. Danny Doring said he was going to go to CVS and buy an old. V8, like an old blank VHS yeah. and just write Danny Doring and his phone number and email on it and hand it to Jeff Jarrett and I was like that's that's gotta be the best yeah that's, I would if you do that please make sure I watch because, because at, that, at that point when Jeff came in he was he wasn't even doing like TNA anymore he was doing uh, Global Force Global Force yeah. so Danny yeah. just wanted to like get in Global Force hand him that blank VHS tape with his name on it which is a great that's like like if you put it in and was like yeah oh, watch this <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is crazy. just fuzz. I bet yeah. you, I bet you, he would have booked him. Yeah, I bet you he would have put it in. Uh, thought it was funny. Called him up if Danny put a real number on there. I'm like, hey, I need you. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're the. This is true. This is hey, true. watch your video. It's awesome. <laughs> it's we need it's to get in here. One and of Danny's the funniest. Like, I, there was nothing on that video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just principle alone. On principle alone, yes. I, I mean, really good. Yeah, I would I would have booked Danny Doring off that videotape yes. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. We were just on a card with him not that long ago. Oh yeah, and he was doing Sugar Mask. Oh, but he and was like, like in the mask for like he put it on before he walked into the building yeah, right. and yeah. never came off. And I, dude, he was like in the back, and I'm like, who the fuck is this dude, man? And then he comes up, he goes, Yo, Danny Doring is on fire today. I was like, That's Danny Doring. Yeah, of course. Me being like an ECW mark, now I'm like, Well, this is fucking enthralled. Awesome. In like two seconds before that. Like completely, like who the fuck is this guy? Right. To like, oh wow, Danny Doring. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> now I get it. This is yeah, great. This is awesome. <laughs> I was just telling somebody the other day about how Danny Doring's wedding was the most extravagant wedding I've ever been to in my entire I, life. I, I, I knew all you guys went, and like I love the stories. He had an ice sculpture in the middle of the appetizers yeah. of himself in wrestling gear. He had an <laughs> ice sculpture of himself in robe of gear course. doing the pose in yeah. the middle of the appetizers. It was, didn't Big Sale marry him? Yeah, Big Sale married them. His, like, wedding party was, like, uh, Roadkill, Crowbar. Uh, yeah, and then, like, I just remember there was, like, this five-course meal, and it was written out on a sheet in front of you at your table. And uh, for dessert, the last course, it just said dessert extravaganza was what the menu said. And we were like, what is this? Well, fourth course comes out. And it go, comes and goes, and they start playing music. So we just start dancing and drinking and having a good time. And then the DJ goes, now it's time for the dessert extravaganza. <laughs> and this wall opens up, like, goo, 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 goo. No like way. one of the gym, like a gym wall, like yeah, the, the wall between wall. the gymnasium. A folding wall goes away. Fucking sparklers like fireworks go off, and there's just an entire another room full of desserts, like a chocolate waterfall, a cotton candy machine, like a tower of cakes hey, and cookies. Mask. It was fucking insane. Yeah. And we like all stopped, everyone got silent, and then we just like cheered and like rushed over there. And now I'm dancing with like a beer in one hand and a cotton candy in the yeah. other, like just having the time of my life. It was That's the craziest great. thing ever. What was Where the, was it? Uh, Somewhere in New Jersey, of course. Yeah. That, that just got me to number one. What was the story then? When now, when you first signed with WWE, and like you had you had never drank up until yeah. that point, right? Right. And then what was it like? Truth, like his big joke with you was like they said that they were like, hey, we got a special on Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> and it was like the shot. So I, <laughs> well, I had my first drop of alcohol the day I got offered my WWE contract, <laughs> and like Jimmy Yang bought me some fruity shot. And I took a shot with some of the boys and, you know, hey, I drank. Yeah. Then the next weekend, like fast forward literally seven days later from my first ever drop of alcohol, 
I am in a strip club with Brian Kendrick, Jimmy Yang, Carlito, R Truth, and back in a VIP room <laughs> yeah. with like bottle service and like just drinking Grey Goose and Cranberry because Brian Kendrick's like, just order this because I never drank an yeah. actual drink in yeah, my life. Like, I, I drank one to, fruity shot. I don't know what yeah. to get. Yeah. yeah. So Grey Goose and Cranberry. Drinking them all night. Well, they closed the strip club, but they let us just stay in there. Oh, so we're just hanging out with the bartenders and the girls. Yeah. And one of the bartenders like, who wants a Jolly Rancher? And I like bowl people over <laughs> to get to the bar. And I get up to the bar to find shots. And I'm like, oh, man. And I like, my God, I sulked away. Like, I really thought there was going to be candy on the other side yeah. of this, this interaction. And again, a literal child. An actual child. I remember we were at the uh, WrestleMania after party. And I try to get a Grey Goose and vodka, and they go, uh, "We don't have Grey Goose. Do you want something else?" And I was like, "Uh, uh, because uh, I didn't even know Grey Goose was a vodka. I just knew that I drank Grey Goose and cranberry. It was like a whole thing. I just yeah. thought Grey Goose was its own thing. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know. He's like, I have this, which is I don't know, God knows, whatever top shelf vodka they had. And I was like. I don't know, I'll have to come back to you. And I like walked away from the bar and I asked somebody, I was like, they don't have Grey Goose, what do I do? And they're like, you just get another fucking vodka. And I was like, oh, okay, that's what I was going to do. So and then I just like hustled over there. Yeah, it was like, I don't know. People are like, well, you were 21, you weren't really a kid. Yes, I was. Yeah. Yeah. I was a fucking kid. I mean, especially for that kind of travel, yeah. Yeah, I was a child. Yeah. I went from like watching cartoons and like riding my bike to being in the WWE basically yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. pretty much like a full time travel schedule yeah I have, like, like a, I have a lot of friends this is gonna kind of I guess segue to it I have a lot of friends in like Chicago that like grew up in like the hardcore and like punk scene so when like CM Punk started becoming like a thing all of them would be like well I didn't fuck we're the same age I never saw him at a fucking show he was never at fucking punk shows blah 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 and then you're like he started wrestling when he was like 16 yeah he didn't have time to go to wrestling, like hardcore yeah, shows or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. He was probably listening to it on a tape deck right. in a car yeah, a driving to like hours. IWA Mid-South right. to wrestle in front of like 40 people <laughs> and then drive back to Chicago when you were at like a punk show. Right. Yeah. And Just like, never had time for it. Right. Yeah. They're like, this straight edge, there's a straight edge wrestler. He's not really straight edge. I'm like, yeah, he is. He's a, he's a, and he's a punk. And it's, it's possible. Blah, blah, yeah. Like he just, when we were going to hardcore shows, he was going to wrestling shows. Right. It's completely different. And like, not drinking. Yeah. Which, I mean, that was <laughs> my, my life is like, I literally have been touring since I was like 15. You know yeah. what I mean? So like, I didn't have time to like learn how to be an adult and I'm 40 years old and I still like. I do the exact same thing I did when I was 15. My yeah. life is exactly the same. Like, I currently own a business, and it blows my own. I'm blowing my own mind by owning a business. Like, you know, I'm uh, I'm still basically the same kid. I basically remember that kid I was telling you about who watched cartoons and rode his bike. Yeah. Now right I just watch that's, cartoons here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just you do know, that stuff here. And eat cereal and yeah. fucking read comic books. That's the same kid I was, except yeah. for now I lived a shit ton of life in like nine yeah. months. I just, I mean, I love. I just like hearing stuff like. Guys like you who've been around for a while, like it's always cool to hear guys doing like cool shit. You know what I mean? Like, so it's not people aren't like like oh like uh, like your name comes up like oh what's Colin Delaney doing? Oh, you know he works for Geico Insurance and you know yeah, uh, yeah that, it's like it's always like it's it's just I love hearing guys doing like rad shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and like we got like I don't know. We're not getting any younger, especially you. Yeah. <laughs> you just had a birthday. So, uh, <laughs> we always used to, like, we've been ribbing Brody since, like, I always tell people, like, I've known Brody since I was 15 and he was 34 and we were backyard wrestling. Yes. Yeah. Which is not true, not yeah. totally accurate, but he was quite a bit older than me. Yeah. But no, like, we're, uh, we're not getting any younger and, like, I, like, I liked... When I listened to Colt's podcast, I was like, fuck yeah, Pepper's there. Oh, and he's on this podcast because he was doing Ring of Honor. Fuck yes, he was. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. You know, like I just did uh, Ring of Honor a couple months ago, too. And That's it's like, bring that up, yeah. super cool, super awesome that, like, you know, because we're from this generation that, like, most of the guys from our generation are on TV somewhere. Yeah. yeah. You know, or are, like, touring with Ring of Honor, you know, doing Ring of Honor or doing New Japan or, like, yeah. you know. So, or have stopped wrestling. Yeah, I was going to say, or the extreme right. of the so, opposite direction. So, guys like us who are still floating around, still, like, doing awesome stuff and still, like, working hard and getting cool opportunities is like, hell yeah, man. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, like, uh, we were talking about, like, you know, guys like Jody Fleisch coming back around. Dude, and, Jody um, Fleisch. Uh, um, his name's, he's in uh, 
with Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian. Oh, Scorpio Sky. Scorpio yeah. Sky, yeah. Scorpio Dude. Sky coming back around. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, there's just so much more cool shit out there now. Yeah, and just guys who are just like full of talent who kind of got possibly stuck in their bubble for a minute. Yeah. And then it's like, wait a second, you guys are some of the best wrestlers walking planet Earth yeah. Yeah. for a bit. What the fuck are you doing not on I, one of these national stages? Because I mean, there's so many of them now. Well, I, that's what I said, because I talk about it like back then, like at least I remember it was like, as far as a job in wrestling, it's like you tried to get a WWE developmental contract or that was it. There wasn't right. really a lot of other options. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now it's, you know, so like, you know, a lot of guys, they just, that just, that just phased them out. But now it's cool to see you guys come back around again because like I said, there's so many more platforms now. Right. Well, so once, much more uh, yeah, because WWE kind of put that, remember when they put that thing out there that they weren't hiring anyone over 30? Over 30. 30 like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Then, then over it, 30? Like, uh, are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah, that's you know, like when you hit your prime. Right. Like, <laughs> that's when, that's when you actually kind of start to get it. You're yeah, only yeah. signing people before they actually get it. That sucks. Exactly. Because how many how many times did they put like young kids on the road that like you know like not you're not the example but like young kids they put on the road who like weren't ready for it. Sure. Who went like, through developmental but like went through developmental real young. Yeah. And you're like just 21, like, 22. Yeah. And Kenny Dykstra. Like, yeah. Like exactly. Kenny Doan, man. Like, dudes just partying hard and Ooh. like yeah exactly you know what I mean doesn't yeah. always work out. No. Uh, uh, the other, and then the other one was like, I remember it was, yeah, not hiring over 30. Oh. For a while, they tried to drop a thing where they weren't going to hire you unless you had a uh, college degree. Right. They're just a whole bunch of weird stuff. And it's always like. It's, yeah, it, I think it, it's like if you'd been in the system once before, they weren't going to hire you again. Like a lot of weird stuff. And then all these things like people get would get like super down about these yeah, things. They yeah, would yeah. get super whatever. Well, me, the the old like, 31 hit me hard. <laughs> yeah, I believe you. So yeah. Brody, Brody too. Yeah. Because he was already 100. Yeah. How old is he actually? No, I don't know. He was probably right around 30 when he got signed. I think he was 31 yeah. when he got signed. I think, yeah, 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 yeah. He was over at least. But he was, you know, it was kind of a yeah, it's kind of slap thing. in the face. Yeah, I remember Bobby Fish same way. Like, yep. The Fish when when they said not hiring over 30, he I was already. Him, I use him as an example all the time. Like, he's like it. one of my because oh, I'm 40 years Dude, old, so I, he's like he's one of my biggest like him and then all the older New Japan dudes. Yeah. Are like the guys I'm like <laughs> okay man like yeah. when I just had shoulder surgery so like. Instantly, I was just like, yeah, maybe I'm done. Maybe I just don't want to do the same. I tried it. That's yeah. cool. I did it for three years. I'm good. Right. And I did it. You know what I mean? And yeah. then I was like, you watch like, Bobby again, Fish. Bobby Fish. You yeah. watch Bobby Fish or something like that. And you're just like, yeah, fuck it. Who's I, hurt? I, I and he's going to come back oh, and just be more better than ever. I, yeah. I, I like wrote, I DM'd him on Facebook not that long ago and just told him, like, I use him as an example, like teaching the young Buffalo guys all the time. And I was like, and you're my favorite wrestler. Like, yeah. you're just like, dude, like, because I mean, thinking about like all the stuff, like I went through, like, he also was like married with two kids the yep. whole time, too. Yep. So like, you know, as far as like trials and tribulations, like the stuff that guy. Real life went adulthood. Man, yeah. Bobby, Bobby Fish is the storyteller of our generation. He is. He would be an he amazing He has some podcast. of the funniest stories I've ever yeah. heard in my entire dude, life. Unbelievable. He's got like. One of the greatest breakup stories I've ever heard. Oh yeah, about but he was in the movie. Just he got, he broke up with a girl, went to the movie theater by himself with a bottle of Jack Daniels and an eight ball of cocaine, <laughs> sat front row at Titanic. Oh my blowing god! Blowing lines, and cried. Cr- blowing lines, shooting Jack and crying his eyes out. Jesus. Front row at Titanic, <laughs> and the way he tells it, it fucking kills me yeah. every time. Every time. Yeah. Like, as if the story's not funny enough. Like, him telling it is just, it's over the top. Yeah, he's, he's, oh, he's upstate New York. Uh, he's Albany. an Albany guy, Albany yeah. Guy. A Tony DeVito student. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, Lo- uh, uh, H.C. Loke and Tony DeVito, the, the Carnage crew, have a lot of, like, influence on this, this area. area. Yeah. Because Loke trained Ring Crew Express, and Ring Crew Express basically helped me, Jimmy, Brody, like, branch out and yeah. get places and would always work with us. And uh, DeVito trained Fish, Cloudy, Cheech. So, like... Yeah, like you said, there's a lot of times. That's ties. like... Yeah. They basically, like, groomed this area, whether they totally know it or not, or were trying to, but, like, this upstate New York area is very yeah. Carnage Crew Which is awesome. Influenced. Yeah. Another, uh, yeah. another, another quick uh, Bobby Fish story that kind of ties into you was... One of my favorite ones was, like, Bobby's also, like, notoriously, like, sleepy on the road. 
from like having kids. <laughs> having, I always figured from having kids and like a job and stuff, he probably just doesn't get a lot of sleep. And then you you said you were driving, yep. and he was in the passenger seat, yeah. and he like hammered like two monsters like back to back, <laughs> and you were like, "All right, man, yeah, we're going." And like he was asleep in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we we both bought two energy drinks at the gas station because uh, Dalton Castle and I think Jordan Lennox were asleep in the back already. They were like wiped out. So uh, Bobby was like, I'll, like a, I'll like stay a, up with you, man. It was like a decent overnight drive, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. I was like, I was like, all right, man, let's stop and get some energy drinks. We both got like the two for four monsters. I crack one, I'm drinking. Like, yeah. He cracks it. He pounds one. Totally slams it to the ground. I was like, woo, here we go. Let's do this. He cracks the second one. He downs it just as fast. I was like, let's do this. So I start driving up the road. Not 30 seconds later. I'm like, so man, how'd your match go tonight? <laughs> He is yeah. snoring, yeah. like, <laughs> and not like comically doing it for a yeah. laugh. Like, like he just he he's took, gone. He took two 16 ounce monsters to the face yeah. in like a matter of minutes and started snoring like yeah. 30 seconds later. That's me. Like, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like sometimes like on tour because I drive a lot on tour and there's times where like we'll drive overnight and then next thing you know I'm like I used to drink you know the big like. Oh, the Open can cans, right? Like oh, yeah, yeah. Big, like, uh, big oil guy. can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is an oil can, isn't like, it? Of Those are great. Yeah. And I would take two sips, then drop a 500 energy drink <laughs> into it, and then drink the entire thing. And I'd be driving and then just be like, yo, can someone, I can't, I can't keep my eyes open. Can someone else drive? Well, uh, I mean, you do know that too much caffeine will make you tired again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was. Yeah, uh, I just learned that. You were uh, recently. <laughs> you, go, you, go, you good brother moved me once. It was on the way back from CZW. It was me and Laura in the front and just you in the back. Yeah. And our Laura passed out. This is one of the many failed times we tried making that seven-hour drive overnight. Yep. And I remember I was driving and like you were just like leaned forward, like right in my ear, just talking. And I was like, we were talking. I mean, and I just remember. Because, like, some old-school hip-hop song came out, and I remember you were talking about, like, a cassette tape, and then I just remember there was a point where I was driving, and I didn't know if I was dreaming or if this was really <laughs> happening, and I'm pretty sure I had closed my eyes, and then I just snapped out of it. And you've been talking the whole time, and I was like, fuck, fuck, we gotta pull over, we gotta pull over. I was yep. like, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Like, yep. just terrifying, man. Terrifying stuff. And I try, I mean, I'm not above pulling over. That's why I like traveling by myself sometimes, especially for long ones, yeah. because... I'm not trying to be a hero ever. No, exactly. I'm a I'm a pull over and I'll doze off for a little I'm bit kind the of guy. Same way. I I also can't sleep in moving cars after all the years of whatever. It just yeah. freaks me out too bad. I can't do it. I, I gotta be out. like yeah, yeah, I gotta be like forty eight hours no sleep, like yeah. exhausted to do that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But and I'm not above but some people are like, oh, I can't really sleep in the car, I can't get you know, blah blah blah. It's like, okay. I'm not trying to die. Exactly. Once yeah. my eyes start kind of getting a little heavy and fluttery. Yeah, let's cut this. Yeah, let's cut this right now. I'm going to find the most, the, the, the closest spot, and I'm sleeping. Yeah, the biggest parking lot I can find. And Yeah. Exactly. We, had our, we had our old drummer. We had every time I had his old drummer, Mike, on. And yeah. uh, we, like, flipped the van once. Holy shit. And, like, he got, like, he got, like, a really... He claims, I mean, he, he did get it bad. I was in the back seat and got it the worst. Um, because I was like dead asleep. Yeah. And just you're just a you're in a a, a dryer basically. <laughs> you just, just, just woke up to roll, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I didn't wake up because I hit my hit my head really hard. Oh. So, but so I know it's not okay to laugh. But when you said you're in a dryer, like it looks way cartoony in my That's head. That's exactly the how van, it felt. The van tumbling yeah. and you guys just like. So we I had my shoes off. Yeah. I was like asleep, like yeah. shoes off, no like sweatshirt or jacket on, like straight up just t-shirt, and we were in the middle of a blizzard in like Wyoming. Holy shit. So boom, we hit, we roll twice. I wake up with our uh, with our singer on me, and he's like, are you okay, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, And he goes, well, you broke this window with your head. And then I go, oh. Well, that sucks. And I like felt my head, and you like I had a huge, you know, like egg on my head. Yeah. My elbow was like throbbing because I like my elbow hit something, and then I instantly just started screaming everybody's name. Yeah. And no one was answering. <laughs> so I'm like oh, yelling fuck. like Mike, Mike, Jordan, Jordan, like just yelling dudes' names, and no one's answering. Oh, I'm just like, holy shit. Come on, man. They were all outside like yeah. sorting themselves out or whatever, you know. Yeah. So. 
And then you gotta get out shoeless in a blizzard. Yeah, I, I like to go through like the wreckage of glass and stuff, find my shoes, find a jacket, and then I'm just sitting in a blizzard. So, um, the, the, the part that I'm getting at is like we had like the first two uh, benches like out. And we built like um, like a little bed, like okay. you know, it's probably about a foot and a half, two feet, you know. So it was perfectly level with the benches, right? But it was like a, a bed under there, and you could put stuff under it. Nice. But it was free moving, like you could pick it up. Okay. And like Mike got trapped under that, so <laughs> like shit. when it flipped, he, he was. It's, I feel like he was lucky. Yeah. Because he was that thing pressed him up against something as it like you know what I as mean. As it tumbled, yeah, yeah. But yeah. also it was like falling on him the entire time. So. Holy shit. Yeah, and like he claimed like he still had floaters. Yeah. Like in his eyes, like from that thing, and I remember him like he was like, "All right, guys, let's go home." We were on our way to start a tour with Story of the Year, and like we didn't play a show yet. It Whoa. was like. We were in Wyoming, like, meeting up in Salt Lake or something like that, and that poor kid had, like, four dudes who were like, nah, we're going to get a new van, we're going to keep going. And Mike was like, uh-uh, I, no, I can't, I can't yeah. get back in a van. Dude, he would, like, shake, and, like, he didn't yeah. sleep for, like, an entire tour. Like, Holy literally shit. was just waiting. Like, anytime you would, like, just nudge just a little bit, the wheel just a little Terrified. bit, you'd see his head, like, pop up, like... Like, just shell-shocked, you know? Ooh. So, like, yeah, it was uh, like... Well, did, did somebody fall asleep at the wheel? Is that what no, happened? No, just it just, black ice. Yeah, just hit black ice. And you know, the craziest part about that whole thing, why we lucked out completely, and, like, I had, like, a, a badly bruised elbow and a concussion. Nothing. Hey. You know what I mean? Like, that, that yeah. what, as opposed Fuck. to what could happen, right? right? Or could Holy have shit. Um, we had this, like, you know, like, the big safes that you can buy... Like, not, not a big safe, but, it, like, I don't know. They're probably about 50-pound, like, safe. Like, yeah. A little bit bigger than a bread box. Sure, sure. As, as you would say in uh, <coughs> Pictionary. In, in nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> in, in nowhere in 2018. Um, yeah, it was, like, that big. That thing was just in between the two seats. Yeah. And as we were flipping, it was just shooting around the van. Ooh, holy fuck, Like, dude. crazy. Just a steel, <laughs> yeah. a steel safe just, like, Wait, just flying around. Space. And Durst was doing merch at the time, and uh, it went into the windshield right in front of his face, and his his seatbelt stopped him from like hitting it Ooh. face first. <laughs> so he was like, like inches from it, Holy like shit. face first. It was like we lucked out so much. Our trailer was like open like a tuna can, and everything just out of it, like just went and just peeled back like was a. Was it tuna a rental can. van? No, it was our van. We owned it. Holy shit, man. Uh, did you place an order for coffee? Yeah, for Danny. I didn't even wow. know you checked him. <laughs> wow. It's a pro move. It's a very it's a pro move. Pro move. Done this before. I got, him a re I got him a wrestling robe. What? Yeah, I bought him a wrestling robe. What kind? It was just like a... Uh, like a boxing. Yeah. I can't remember the company, but it was okay. a boxing one. I just took off. like a hood. I just took nice. all the thing off. I was, when I was hurt with my shoulder, I was thinking about everybody else. Nice. <laughs> yeah. It's real nice of you. I got Jesse a mask. I bought me a mask. I bought him a mask. I bought him a robe. What, why did you buy Jesse a mask? We, we got a character. We do characters. Okay. Some, him and I. Some characters okay. from, for the Black Craft show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, have you seen that face? Are you going to try yeah. and cover that fucking <laughs> no, thing no, up? No, you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> when he's in the ring, Jesus. He's, he's, he's maskless. <laughs> just an entrance okay. mask. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Entrance just some mask. Bad Yes. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. John Gresham has like, does he still wear that octopus oh, yeah. entrance mask? That was like the coolest thing I ever cool. saw. It was very cool. Entrance re masks are underrated. I just saw, yeah, I just saw like one picture of it once and I was like, whoa. Because I because his like his thing was the octopus, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Is he he's like a he's a trainer for ROH now, right? Or something like that? Yeah, it's him and, him and Joey Mercury now. Oh really? Say, uh, the school Ring of Honor school is moving to Baltimore, Whoa. and Mercury and Grisham are the trainers now. I just worked Mercury yeah. a couple weeks ago. I just yeah. and he like got off, just got off like a long flight, and he was real like kind of out of it. Yeah. But like we put together this match that seemed kind of fun. His like wrestling IQ, his wrestling like his in brain the, in the minute, like is was it was blowing my mind, and uh, I know he's been around forever longer than me even yeah. but it's not often that I get my like 
mind blown by somebody. Yeah. Like, we got off track for, like, just a second, and we, he just... Instantly. He just instantly, like, took it back. Fixed it, yeah. He... It was like... We didn't get really off track. We just started going before he wanted to, and then realized, and then started to, like... He's like, oh, never mind, let's do this first. And then I was like, how are we going to get back? And then he's like, da 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 I was like, oh, he's right there. Yeah. And then he's just right on top of every, He was just like... Yeah. I've never been in there with somebody like that where they was just, like, blowing my mind in the minute. Like, yeah. I think I'm hitting the ropes, like, with this puzzled look. Like, how is he doing this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's guys, just insane. Guys like that where they're, like, thinking one step ahead and, you know what I mean? One they, step they just, ahead? Yeah. That dude had it, like... He had every variable figured out. Like, yeah. he knew uh, immediately. He's like, oh, shit, we didn't do this. Blah, blah, blah. And then he just flipped it and just did something else yeah this so this match started off so uh i get to the ring and joey gets the ring looking like a fucking billion my, dollars my favorite quote he, he said, looks insane he, said he has abs that go all the way around yeah they start <laughs> in his abs and they they finish somewhere by his back they like wrap so deeply around it's, it's like quote. it's serious though he comes out and you're like holy shit he wrestles yeah. in jeans though right yes i yeah, love just it added, it's like holy shit look jeans. at this guy the best. so he comes out, and I'm like, holy fuck. And we're doing, like, baby face, baby face. He gets in the ring, and a small child yells into the ring, points at me, and says, where are your abs? <laughs> no way. <laughs> and, I, and the whole crowd goes, oh. And I look around with, like, t- like yeah. shock in yeah, my yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, like that embarrassing. Like- and I ran to the locker room, and I put on a Ninja Turtles onesie and came back out. And wrestled the entire match with in a fake, Ninja Turtle onesie with, the abs with on fake it? abs yeah. with a, a turtle yeah. shell abs on it. <laughs> yeah, I get, in the, I get in the ring. We lock up, and Joey goes, "Where the fuck did you get that thing?" I say, "Don't worry about it." Yeah, and we just kept wrestling. Just keep going. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I got it for this occasion. Well, I actually brought it because the show was outdoors, but it wasn't originally supposed to be. Yeah, and it was kind of cold outside that oh, day. Okay. So the boys were texting me during the day because I was still here at the shop. They were like, "Just so you know, it's fucking." freezing out uh, so I I, I, hate those shows. I grabbed it because I had it back back here at Pop Rock because I wore it to tend cereal one day yeah and uh, so I grabbed it and I brought it and uh, I was like but then it got warm so yeah. I was like I don't need this fucking thing but then some small child told me I didn't have abs yeah. and I had to go get it this shit writes itself man do you remember the time where we wrestled outdoors in October yeah it was a, it was a night show that's in October like, when yeah. you said that that's like directly where my brain goes it was, it was me against Jesse so also you had to walk from the locker room all the way back behind this giant building in the dark no light to get there in about 35 degree weather it was like kind of raining outside kind of raining and you there was no direct path from the locker room to the curtain you had to walk all the way behind this building had to be 100 yards you had to walk to get to the curtain in the freezing rain and you know we're both in trunks we both walked out and we're professionals we, we both went to the ring in coats but with trunks on, and I remember the one rule we were like, we're like, all right, man, no chops. Let's be real easy, like yeah. even just touching each other. We lock up. Jesse backs me. To, we do a little roll around the ropes. Backs me to the corner and just puts give you a push, both right? hands firmly into my chest, and they felt like knives. And I, <laughs> I am just motherfucking him. <laughs> yeah. It's the last thing we talked about before we went out. Like, <laughs> let's like no chops. Like, be careful how we grab each other. It's gonna be stingy out there. And he puts two hands so firmly in my chest like they made like a, a clapping noise and it felt like glass just shredding me <laughs> I forgot about that first thing you know where was it? it was somewhere between it was somewhere near like Darien Lake somewhere between here yeah. and Buffalo yeah. just some outdoor behind a bar Vader was in the main event against Nick like yeah. super random as super they should random yeah, I mean, Vader show Vader was yeah. in the main Vader event Vader was in the main event yeah, yeah. and uh yeah me and Jesse wrestled, <laughs> and we didn't. I don't think we talked about much of anything before we went out. But I remember the last thing I said, and last thing we talked about was let's not do this. And the first thing Jesse does is exactly that. <laughs> and I am mother. And he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. As he's like backing away from me. You can, I remember you can see it on my face. I'm like horrified that he just did that like, to me. So like, I was like, why is he so that so much? And I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, I was just giving him this look, like, yeah, are you fucking like, out of your mind? Damn it. Did you really just do that to me? Yeah, well, me and Jesse have a storied history. 
history of wrestling each other. Another time we wrestled in a bar in like a 12 foot ring, uh, and we were in the this opener. CW at the yeah. yeah. <laughs> we decided we weren't going to talk about anything before yeah. we wrestled. We yeah. just determined we were just going to wrestle. We we're like, yeah, we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna wrestle. Yeah. We, the only thing we knew was that I was gonna come to the ring with some money in my tights. Yeah. I was gonna go buy us two shots. I was gonna take them in the ring. We were gonna shoot them. We were gonna wrestle. The finish was X. We got to the ring. We took those <laughs> shots. We locked up. We did like two wrist locks, and Jesse went home. We wrestled for like three minutes. <laughs> I was like, what happened? He was like, what? We didn't. <laughs> What did you want? Yeah. I was like, I don't know. We only wrestled for like three minutes. He's like, really? Like, yeah, well, Damn. yeah. It was about three minutes. That shooter probably really got to me. <laughs> were, you one, were you one of the original 2CW dudes? I wasn't like that was four, original, CW. original, but I was the first outside of Syracuse, like Rochester, Buffalo bring in. Was so ISIS? Was, ISIS is an OG, yeah. Okay, because that's like, I remember I've been to a few shows, and the things that I remember... Yeah. Our, the last one we went to was the one with like Roddy. Roddy was there. Uh, the Young Bucks were there. Yeah, that was that was the last two CW show. ISIS was legit in the crowd sleeping <laughs> the entire time. And then Until like, his match, right? Music hit, and yeah. he like got up. Dude, he's doing this weekend at Bernie's gimmick at the yeah. time, which oh, was fucking yeah. mad great. You. Yeah, like God, that was so good. I couldn't stop talking about him. Yeah, and then Nick. Like, Nick Ando yep. did the whole, like, he came to the ring, did his thing all the way around, then left the exit, and I, I was like, this is unfucking real Like, this was like, <laughs> like just those two, en like, entrances had me, and I was so bummed that that was, like, the last one. Because didn't they do the thing with ISIS, too, where, like, they would play the music, and then he would start, like, yep. moving and dancing? He'd weaken to Bernie's his way right the fuck yeah. in there. And he had it down to, like, a T. Yeah. Like, oh, man, I forgot uh, about that. It was so fucking good. This most recent AIW show, they had Nate Webb on it. Yes, Spider Nate awesome. Webb. Spider Nate Webb, and you know he comes out to Teenage Dirtbag yeah. by Weedus, and it's the greatest. Yeah. And so, Teenage Dirtbag hits, and he just fucking comes out, he goes into the crowd like he does, he's dancing, he's doing his thing, he's jawing with people, and Teenage Dirtbag's not a, like a short song. No? Yeah. It's like a four minute, four and a half minute, minute yeah. long song. So, it gets to literally the end of the song and he hits his pose at the finish of it. And the crowd chants one more time and Nayweb just shrugs his shoulders, no walks way. to the back and does it a second time and this time on his entrance grabs a bunch of children, <laughs> gets them to do the entrance with him, gets like 25 fans in the ring with him doing poses on the corners and shit before this six-way scramble that he was going to do. Rules. Which is unreal. And it was, yeah, and then did Teenage Dirtbag all the way through twice. Dude. That's unreal. That's amazing. So cool. I was laughing so hard. Yeah. yeah. So hard. Yeah. Also, I love that song, and I love Spider Nate yeah. Webb. So and, then, I mean, like, and the fact that he had like 20 <laughs> people in the ring, he's like, all right, guys, go back, take your seats. We're yep. going to have a wrestling match now. <laughs> Actually did it. It was yeah. amazing. It was a gift that just came out. It was someone, someone posted like an old gif of him doing that, like the moonsault across the ring. Oh, I didn't uh, see it. He would do basically like the, uh, not the Van Terminator, yeah, Van Terminator. Van Terminator. Yeah. But coast to coast. A, he would do a moonsault coast to Get coast. Get the fuck out really? of here. They just showed it, yeah. I just saw the wow. gif, like yesterday. Nate, awesome. Nate Webb's one of those dudes, he's like, not OG indie, but he's pretty close to like yeah, yeah. OG indie guys. Yeah, he like, was like, he was like Reckless an, Youth, original. Don Montoya. He was like, like an early TNA yeah. guy. Yeah, Hero, Cabana, yeah. Punk. Like Spider Nate Webb's he's right up there with... With yeah. that kind of crew. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like the OGs, like super indie guys. Yeah, so it's always cool when you see, you know. Yeah, and Spider Man. Like, re they like regularly bring him back, right? Yeah, like every once in a while. He's yeah. always, and he was a surprise on like day two yeah. of the tournament the show. The tournament. Just, yeah. I just, I saw him, again, I can't remember who the hell you guys, you and Cheech wrestled someone that day. It was the day uh, Ronda Rousey was at AIW. Oh, okay. Like, I was there that at that show. Yeah. And like Nate Webb was on that show. Yep. And like he came out and I was like, what the fuck? Spider Nate Webb, man. Awesome. The sixth way he had at AIW was him, Cheech, Gringo Loco, Lewis Linden, Space Monkey, and Andrew Everett. Yes. That was the sixth way. <laughs> yeah. I remember I moved on in the tournament, so I was with Janela, Fleisch, yeah. and Laredo. Yeah. But then I heard what Cheech's match was for losing, and I was like, 
man, that is kind of a cool match for losing. Yeah. Man, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that I wish I lost because I don't. Because <laughs> yeah. my match is super dope too. But uh, man, that six ways looks fun. That's so yeah. awesome. Spider Nate Webb. Yeah. When I wrestled, for, back. When I wrestled for AAW, like I did like an outdoor show, at, yeah, like yeah. a bar or whatever, and it was cool. It was awesome. Was it outside was, of uh, Tequila Jacks? Was yeah. that the one? Yeah. And I was so hoping Nate Webb was going to be on that uh, show, but he wasn't. Ah. Uh, yeah. They're doing Tequila Jacks coming up with Dick Justice versus Kiku Taro. Yeah. Which I'm very excited he's, for. He's, awesome. He was just talking about it. And Grado yeah. versus Nick Gage, which I'm <laughs> yeah. possibly it's equally insane. excited also for. Excited about, yeah. <laughs> That's going to be really fun. Good shit, man. Yeah. Uh, Hold it up? Yeah. 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 How long do we go? We went up pretty long. We went probably about an hour. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, hey, listen, I can I can keep talking if you guys want. I'm so Grandmaster <laughs> Sexte is about to take a twist of fate from Jeff Hardy on oh, heat from, over here. It's, it's, it's loading. We're getting ready. It's loading. We're getting ready. We're getting ready. He's yeah. going to hit it. When he hits it, he's been G-ing it up for so long. That was, it's too much, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too much, uh, Which Brian Christopher. Which was before Too yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So very, basically, you got Sunday Night Heat on this TV. Oh, there it is. You got Big Daddy on the right. Lethal Weapon. Who is... Is that Lethal Weapon? Yeah, Lethal Weapon. Four on the right with Jet Li? Yeah. Man. King of the Hills on the other TV. Also, what is, uh, what's that? Is that Christy Swanson? Yeah, she's really hot. God, man. Oof. Really hot. uh, Oof. She's a looker. Yeah. A knockout. Oh, they got Doc Hendricks with them. Of course they have Doc (laughs) Hendricks with them. Yo, where do you find those? Where do you find (laughs) those? Where did they find those, like, velvety, tight shirts? Hot Topic, 100%. Uh, 1998. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you were in a different scene back then, man. You weren't yeah. in the the velvety shirt scene. No, velvety that shirt. same that same place where uh, Triple H got them shiny leather yeah. pants. Leather pants on Not, they weren't like those things were like a different kind of shiny yes. leather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very cool. There were guys who wore that as wrestling gear back. There were a lot of guys who wore that I as wear, wrestling I gear. I wear right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 not like those. <laughs> His name those, is Pepper Park. Those, <laughs> those were pretty shiny. Triple oh. H is killing it with uh, the Stooges. Yeah, so now for, like, about the next hour, you guys, we're just going to tell you what's going on on this episode of Sunday Night Heat. So live, look, it's a crowd. Oh, here comes this again. This is clips from Over the Edge. I was going to say, Mr. McMahon coming on this Sunday Night Heat sounds really weird. Mr. McMahon in, like, like an oversized suit. Yeah. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with all that money, you think you get one that fits him. Uh-huh. With Briscoe and Parrish. Oh, it's uh, it's before Over the Edge. Is, is this really before oh, Over the Edge? Oh, it's before the pay-per-view. Yeah, because they, they would film them live before. Isn't the, Over the Edge where Owen passed away? Is it really? It does look like the entrance way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you might be honest. Oh, you. real bummer to end on you guys. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. Let's talk for another hour until everyone forgets <laughs> <Yeah>. about this. <laughs> let's think of something positive to bring up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well... Thank you, Colin. Colin, yeah. you're the man, buddy. Thanks for having Where, us. Where uh, you want to drop like your social medias and stuff? Yeah, I'm on those. You're good on that. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, yeah, sorry. Here, Twitter, uh, Instagram? Twitter, at Extremely Cute. I've been on that Twitter game for a long time. Uh-huh. I'm really bad at it, but I got the name real early, yeah. so yeah, yeah, nobody right else can it. have yeah. that thing. It's at Extremely Colin across most other uh, things because I didn't get on those as quickly. No. Uh, come down to, I mean, Pop Rock. Pop Rock at Pop Rock Culture is yeah. on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Cool. 337 East Ave in Rochester, New York. If anyone's ever around, come down. Say that you heard me on this podcast, and I'll give you something. Nice. We're not sure what it is yet, but I'll figure it out. And I'll be really <laughs> be something. I'll be we'll really there. excited when you tell me that we'll that's what you when heard. We get there, yeah. yeah, I'll be really excited, and then I'll give you something. Yeah, we should tell. Uh, I don't think you ever. Our closing line on here is uh, from Earl Hefner. Uh, we did Brett Joey... screwed Brett. What's that? Brett screwed Brett. Well, is that guy? Yeah. We oh. were at. Uh... No, I thought that was the line that he oh, gave. That... You. No, <laughs> yeah. Brett screwed Brett. That's how you guys See. close every yeah, yeah. week. That's <laughs> weird. Uh, we were at Joey Janela's spring break. Glacier was booked on the show. Yep. Uh, you were watching Glacier made his entrance, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then Andy like looks around to the locker room and goes like, <laughs> "You like, So basically, it was like Glacier came out, and I went like. You guys feel that? It's got a little chilly in here, huh? <laughs> and no joke, Earl Hebner had not said a word the entire night. And he just turns and goes, Pete's in the ring, brother. <laughs> so that's, we use that as the closing line on here yeah. every show. <laughs> and like, I, I like looked up at me like he just goes, Pete's in the ring, brother. And I was like, <laughs> he was squatting down and watching through a window and I was standing up. So like, 
looking down at Earl Hebner, like one of my, like a part of my childhood. Yeah. And then he just cracks one of the best jokes. One of the best lines of all time. Yeah. Well, it's great. I mean, heat's in the ring, brother. <laughs> Perfect. Is it natural? That was very natural. 